how to create a design, a mirror effect like this in Affinity Photo. Let's start right at the beginning. Fresh layer, complete fresh layer. And of course you need a layer. So layer and new layer. And then just go over here and select the paintbrush tool. In the paintbrush tool, along the control bar, you've got this option, symmetry. I've got it for eight and mirror and lock. I want it to be in the center. That's very useful. It's quite easy if you've got lock off to accidentally move it, which is not what I want. I want everything from that center. Now I'm just gonna apply a brush stroke and you see what happens. You got this lovely colorful effect very quickly. Now, obviously the color you get will be different from this. It really depends on the gradient you've selected. So where can you do that? Just go over here and swatches. You can select any of the gradients you've got. Obviously you will probably have a different selection of gradients. And that can be found normally like in gradients. So with that, you can just apply it. You can see then as you apply it, you get this. And of course it follows it out there and you can go out here as well. You can create all kinds of variations just by changing the gradient. So this one, a linear one. So gradient there. And you can apply it like that. And you can see, you get that. Now, of course, it also depends on the brush. Now I've just gone for this one, a gradual acrylic sandpaper 02. There's the brushes. And you've got hundreds of others to choose from. So you go through them, you don't have to go with acrylic. Maybe you might decide to go with, say, sandpaper one, or maybe go with matted acrylic. So I'm just gonna select that now. And now apply the current colors. And you can see the colors there in the swatches and this color now is applied there. And again, you can select a different one and just make sure you do select it. It doesn't change there, you haven't actually selected it. I do that quite often. I think I've selected it, it's just hovered over more than anything. And you can see then you can apply it outwards like that to create all kinds of beautiful, colorful designs. What you need, you can just change it. You don't have to go with eight. So you might decide, you know what? Go with 16, so you can put it to 16. Now there is a limit, I think it's 20. But you can see then when you do it, and again, let's select a different gradient. Select that, and then apply it again. And you can see as you do it, you get a different effect again, and so on. You can create all kinds of designs going outwards like that, or inwards, don't have to. You can also, let's just go and select a different one again, just there, and you can go like that to create sort of just rotate it around. You don't have to go outwards and inwards for like that. So you can create some lovely circular designs very quickly just by doing that. So something like that. But I don't want that, I'll just undo that. But you can do sort of circular designs as well. Or maybe circular for some part and then sort of have it go out like that. And again, go circular again and so on. You could create all kinds of weavy sort of weaving in and out designs. But also what you can do as well as using these swatches. And of course, how to create gradients, please check out my videos on gradient creation. You can create literally thousands of different gradients, thousands of different color designs for this. But a really useful way of creating even more designs, go to layer and new layer, or just go down here and just select here. Just click add pixel layer. So with that added, you can see now you've got a new pixel layer. And I'm gonna select a different brush, and I'm also gonna select a different swatch. Let's just quickly move that out of the way and maybe go for this one. And with that, I can apply again. And this time, you can see the effect going outwards. Of course, you could add transparency into it. You could create all kinds of amazing gradients. Well, once you've got that, what you can then do, as it's on a layer, so you can see it's there, a layer, you can go to effects. So click there and then 3D. And 3D, just simply increase that. And also you can change, sometimes of course, if you change it, it doesn't look great. You can just see subtle changes. It really depends on this radius. as also the actual transparency of the pixels you've got there as well. Obviously I've got very faint, so it's very subtle. And also you can click here and you can maybe add a profile, which makes it even more stand out. So you can change that, just click there, go through the different profiles, and with those, also change the direction. You can change that and create different designs that way. 
and close. And you can, of course, create another layer. You could add more and more layers on top. So let's just go there. Just go there. Again, add another pixel layer. And let's select matte acrylic. And let's select a different gradient. There's that one. And now apply it. And of course, what you can also do, if you want, you can go here to blend modes. You've got opacity, flow. You can change these. You can change all these settings. Don't have to keep it as as it was obviously applied. You can always go down here inside. Oh, you know what? I want multiply. So multiply. And you can apply it to create even more unusual. And you can also just do dabs as well. You don't have to have it sort of like a continuous flow. But if you reason, just to apply a dab like that. And again, select a different gradient and apply another dab there. And you can see as you do that, just subtle touches there. Sometimes it doesn't seem to actually apply at all, but once you've got that, again, exactly the same, go to layers and you go to effects, just click there. And again, go to 3D or bevel and boss or Gaussian blur, etc. And then you can simply change the radius there. And you can see as you do that, that will affect all those, just that layer, none of the others. So they all just change and click close. So you've got this design now. Or what you can do, if you want, you can put them all together. You can combine them all, so select them all. So all selected, and then you can flatten them. So go to layer, and down here, and merge selected. So they're all merged into a single layer. Now, once you've got that, what you can also do is, of course, you could apply some more brush strokes, perfectly reasonable. You've got a range of different brushes. You've got hundreds of brushes that you can use. All these ones, obviously, will vary depending on the brushes you've got included. But what you can also do, you can go to filters. So filters, and go down here to distort, and mirror. Now, because it's actually applied to the center, all those brush strokes, if I do the mirror now, you can see what happens. It doesn't seem to change at all. You change, increase that, and now you can see that it's just slowly changing. So then you get this lovely mirror effect. And you increase that, increase that, and so on. And you can create a whole range of different. Now, if you move the origin point, you can just simply click and move the origin. I don't want to do that. I want to keep it in that center. But also you can go here to input. So you can go around and you can see as you do that, you can see you get this lovely kaleidoscope effect. Also we can do hold down the alter option key on the keyboard, and then it will slide around, move around without any constraint, which is quite good because you can create, you think, oh, you know what? That's much nicer than having it 165. 166 works better. And you can also do the same with output if you want. You can change that, move that around if you want. And also change the number of mirrors. I'm gonna go with apply. And of course, what you can also do, you can always repeat it as well. Sometimes reapply it creates an interesting effect as well. And of course, again, you can go back and you can add some more. So you just quickly apply, again, more brush strokes to that design. And again, just change it. Maybe go with a different gradient and maybe change size. You don't have to, of course, have it a very large width. You always go maybe for slightly small ones like that. Just create subtle changes like that going outwards. And again, you could put it on a layer or just put it on, as I'm doing, on the background layer. And that's a great way of creating all kinds of unique, colorful designs from swatches, from using swatches, using any brush to apply it, and of course, multiple layers, as well as different layer effects as well included. Any questions, please let me know.